What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack, Superman's Comics. And we reached the end of the week, so that means one thing. It is time for Last Call. That's right, we're giving you our picks for comic books that are heading FOC or Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday night. If you're everyone else, it's a little bit earlier if you're DC, right, Jack? Yeah, that's right. And uh, DC certainly had a big shakeup so much for a multi distributor system as we're now down to just lunar distribution. But uh, glad to see DC on the list. Definitely a lot of people uh, were looking for it. And there's a couple DC titles I'm excited to talk about. And we've got a couple uh, exclusive announcements tonight to talk about. So uh, let's get into it. Definitely. We're going to start it off with Ice Cream Man number 21. Ice Cream Man from issue one has garnered some acclaim, whether it's the cover, whether it's the story, but even more so, especially with those late Dr. Seuss printings and that cover B for that Dr. Seuss that came out, right? Yeah, yeah, they've done a really great job. They've done a great job with their cover art. Um, they've done a great job with the concepts beyond, behind the covers. It's an anthology series, which is creates unique um, opportunities in that you can kind of take every issue and kind of have a new theme, a new thought. Issue 21 is going to be very kind of Watchmen Rorschach uh, kind of themed. So you're going to see some covers that kind of give that look. Uh, and, but at the same point, it also creates some challenges because it's tough to get continuity throughout the story. And I really think it's amazing. This is one of my favorite series, one of my favorite reads. Um, and I think it's, it's kind of incredible that an anthology series like this has been able to 21 issues really captivate an audience. Um, and I know like Quibi didn't work out. Uh, that was just, you know, announced that Quibi's shutting down. Um, I think that long form content on people's phones is not something that people are yet comfortable with or may never be comfortable, but, um, I still think Ice Cream Man as a television show is is something that needs to happen. Um, I hope that somebody like HBO or Netflix picks up on it because what a great series. Yeah, I like it. You know why? Because I, I'm a lazy person. I can be lazy at sometimes. I don't read every single issue. Ice Cream Man, I can pick up whenever I want, miss a bunch of issues, pick it back up, and I'm not missing anything because it's got that as an anthology stories, like mm -hmm. you said. Leave an image, but stay in independent. We're getting over to IDW with that CSRO's number one. This one I'm really excited to read. Huge fan of this writer. He wrote another book for IDW called Road of Bones. It's just as badass. Yeah, and it's really that um, that kind of reception that Road of Bones got. If, if you're not familiar, Road of Bones sold out, went to a second print. It came out kind of on the heels of Canto um, around the time that there were a couple other kind of like big time creator owned IDW series that were making making noise and Road of Bones became a tough back issue for for the number one issue the first uh print so I think it's kind of coming off of that we kind of get a little bit of a, a experience with the writer and we kind of feel like okay you know this is a writer with some chops here uh, new series coming out and this one is being supported clearly a, a bit more than Road of Bones because we're getting not only a one in ten incentive but again this is why this one's maybe the sleeper of the list this is one thing that Brian and I have talked about is you got to pay attention when IDW puts these one in 25 incentives on these series, especially creator own series where it's a, kind of more of a risk for a retail shop to jump on board. Um, it's one thing when it's like image or boom, who's more known for it. IDW has still got that uphill climb in this department, but um, this is, you know, the second series from this creator of, again, first one was a hit. I expect big things and it could be under ordered. Uh, so I like that one in 25 incentive, but I also think the one in 10, uh, as well as the regular price cover B is, is definitely books to be on the lookout for. Um, so if this was one that was maybe not on your radar, uh, again, this is why the, the last call show was great because I think uh, we, we can get you a last chance opportunity to maybe get in on the ground floor with this one. Yeah, this is one I was also fortunate enough to get an advanced PDF for. So if you like Road of Bones or if you like horror comics, this is definitely one that you're going to want to pick up. And that's why you should pre-order it before Final Art Cutoff. Maximize that discount. Shifting over from those independents over to Marvel, we get that Marvel's Voices of Indigenous Voices number one. I like this one because it's spotlighted. It's spotlighting Native American creators. Yeah, and I think it, um, for me, uh, you know, I've talked about this before. My my uh, children's mother is Native American. My kids are half Native American. Um, it has kind of a special place in, in our family because 
that that's kind of um you talk about representation in comics it's been something that's been very important over the last several years but i've heard from several members of our community carolina chris being one of them uh carolina chris 26 if you're not familiar follow his youtube channel great youtube channel friend of the channel um you know and he's a native american who actually comes from the same tribe a, as my children's mother and they they um have always, he's always kind of felt like that community is underrepresented. And then um, I remember even back when we were in a speculation group, uh, the former leader is, it was another one who has Native American roots and was, you know, constantly frustrated with the depiction of Native Americans from Marvel Comics. They, it, when Marvel kind of got on board with, uh, you know, race relations and allowing for people of color to voice characters of color, they didn't do that with the Native American characters. And we still kind of played on Cowboys and Indians tropes that are severely outdated. Um, the Marvel Voices project has been an, an excellent project. The barbershop variant for the first Marvel Voice is really connected with the African-American community. Um, and they've done a great job in those departments. I'm glad to see this coming to kind of an underserved uh, market. But also, again, as we get ready for an election, the very first Americans, the Native Americans, the people that were here before we were here, um, and not only ha having stories about Native American characters where these characters are depicted more accurately and more appropriately, but these are by writers from actual Native American tribes. They're from artists from actual Native American tribes. Um, you know, you're getting the First Nation represented. Uh, uh, you're getting the Apache Nation represented. Um, you know, you're getting uh, you know, several others. And I, I think that that's, that's really cool of Marvel to go ahead and, and take this kind of like one step further um, and so I hope that this book does well and has kind of the reach that we see the Marvel Voices original book, which has already gone to new printings. We've talked about that at the end of our show previously. Um, and as well as those, those uh, Native American variants that are going to be hitting, we've talked about that from Jeffrey Varegi. Those have gotten a lot of attention. So hopefully this does a lot for this uh, community of, of comic book fan. Here's a title that's probably on a lot of people's radar, but don't wait till it's release day. Get that discount, pre-order before FOC. And we are talking about that symbiote Spider-Man King in Black number one. Yeah, and I know that sometimes people get kind of turned off by the tie-ins. I think we have to give a new um, big crossover event like this a chance. Uh, you got to kind of check it out. And this one is definitely big. Look, you're going to get you're going to get one-shot tie-ins. You're going to get tie-ins to the regular series. They just put out the total checklist. It is large. It is very indicative of absolute carnage. But again, who amongst us doesn't really feel like absolute carnage delivered? Um, it was certainly something that we spent six months talking about on the channel. So uh, this is the time. I, I think that we've been anticipating King and Black for a while. Um, but it, we're at that point now where we are ready to start getting into it. And I think that you do not want to miss these early um, kind of nuggets of the story coming in other uh, one shots and crossovers. So symbiote Spider-Man King and black. That's the first one that I will be paying attention to. Yeah. I'm probably not going to pick up all the tie-ins. So I'd say it all the time on this channel, especially with Marvel. I tend to pick up more DC tie-ins than Marvel, but this is what I'm definitely going to pick up just because I'm a big fan of Peter David and he's a writer on this. So definitely going to pick this one up. Sticking with Marvel, we also have Venom number 30 that brings us to that finale of Venom Beyond story arc, right? Yeah, that's right. This has been a big time arc and it's had just incredible buzz from readers to speculators to collectors to those old school symbiote fans. Uh, this has kind of touched on everybody and everybody's been excited about it. Um, and again, and when we say everybody, that includes retailers so much so that uh, we want to give a big shout out to BlackCapeComics.com who has brought us a, an exclusive variant to debut right here on the channel today, have they, Brian? That's right. They are going with an homage, but not just any old homage. They are going some dark period art with Saturn Eats His Son, painting that I wasn't quite familiar with until I saw this, but it is a great homage. It's a Mike Mayhew variant, and it's going to go on sale Wednesday, October 28th at 8 p.m. Eastern. 
That's right. And they've limited it to just 1,000 trade dress as well as 600 virgin copies. Um, and again, uh, going on sale this weekend. And yeah, definitely hitting that high art note with the uh, with their homage. Not not kind of homaging a, a, a yeah. You're gonna want to break cover. out the Pinot Grigio for this one. Right, right. You can get a little art snobby with this one. And, and we're gonna talk about another Black Cape comics book soon that kind of has that same feel as well. Next up, get with DC. Yes, DC's on the list. We've heard the comments. People want DC books. So we got it right now. We have Batman number 103 that has that gorgeous Francisco Mentina B variant, but it has that design variant as well. But I'm kind of meh on this. It's like Bugle Boy Bruce Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Don't love the design variant. Gosh, we're just, gosh. We were just talking about it. Um, people are clearly behind these design variants because they keep running them out. But uh, yeah, this is the one where you lose me, but... This issue for me, Brian, is reader buzz. Um, you're talking about Batman going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ghostmaker. Ghostmaker's still a character. So many questions. Uh, so many, you know, things left unanswered. Clown Hunter. I'm all about Clown Hunter. We're getting Clown Hunter, Harley Quinn. Uh, you know, definitely trying to figure out more of what's going on post-Joker War. Uh, Punchline. People are demanding getting her out of jail. Um, so this, to me, is still reader buzz, man. This James Tynan run is fire. And I, I really love how new artists can get on Batman, new writers, um, and just a character that's kind of like timeless and old, old, for lack of a better term, they can kind of make this character new and kind of everybody has their own take on Batman. And I'm very excited to be reading James Tynan right now. Yeah, it's nice to have that. I mean, it seems like we keep saying it week in and week out, whether it's FOC, whether it's Bolo, mm. but James Tynan's run on Batman has been fantastic. I know there's people out there that don't care much for it, but I've enjoyed it definitely. Sticking with DC, we just talked about the first issue this week on the Bolo Show, but we get that Sean Murphy creator series, writer and artist. That's right. We're talking about Batman White Knights, Harley Quinn number two. Yeah, and this one's really easy for me to talk about because we just talked about on the Bolo Show how the Batman White Knight, uh, Harley Quinn number one caught people off guard and uh, everybody was kind of scrambling for it, had uh, serious reader buzz. People are running to pick it up. We talked about how we thought maybe by the weekend this thing would be kind of sold out. Um, this is not one you want to sleep on. Issue number two, you're going to see that print run drop 50%. So make sure you are pre-ordered uh, by FOC. Hit up your LCS, uh, wherever you buy your comics from, blackcapecomics.com, great source, 50% off of pre-orders. They ship absolutely safe and secure in that comic tank mailer. Um, so, yeah, you know, wherever you get your comics from, this is a series you're going to want to jump on. We have one more DC book for you, and this is one that I'm probably the most excited for for FOC this weekend, and that is The Other History of DC Universe number one. This is that DC Black Label miniseries, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely a cool concept, and one that I think is exciting because we don't know really what to expect. This is a series that is going to reframe iconic moments in DC history that we're already familiar with. Um, but this is something that I, I, I've talked about in my personal life. I talk about with my employees at my regular job. Life is about perspective. Um, it's something that I've grown to learn in my 35 years of life. You can view things one way and see the same thing. And another person uh, can view the exact same event. But through the perspective of their eyes, it is totally different. Their experience is different. Um, and I think that especially when we're talking about different races or, or, or ethnicities or, you know, genders or uh sexual orientations these things come into play you know in to extreme fashion and we were just talking about the need for uh you know inclusion and representation this is an example where dc is taking some of the the popular uh uh characters of color and having them um be rewritten in this mini series kind of going through these events um and kind of reframing them through the eyes of these characters so it's going to be really kind of a unique series. We've never seen kind of this like retake on things. And certainly, look, I'm, you know, this isn't a situation where we're trying to be political or anything, but this is a, a well-known fact that in the history of comic books, you know, the, a lot of these African-American characters that were created in the 70s, and I don't mean to make light of it, but they were written by white guys who tried to use their, 
their, their best black voice and it just it, it kind of comes off campy and silly we it's been touched on in the luke cage tv show it's, it's been touched on on the black lightning television show on the cw so here we're going to get the perspectives of jefferson pierce aka black lightning his daughter anissa who is known by the code name thunder Mal Duncan, who's a little bit lesser known character known as Harold, um, his wife, who's more well known th- due to Teen Titans, uh, Karen Beecher, Bumblebee, Renee Montoya as the question, and Tatsu Yamashiro as Katana. Um, five issue mini series from Black Label. So, also being Black Label, right, you know it's going to be a little bit more mature themed. They're going to go there. It's going to have a one in 25 variant. Right, which you don't see a lot from Black Label. So getting that incentive. And you mentioned Giuseppe Comicoli on the covers. These are This is really inc- an incredible um, – I think it's going to be overlooked too, sadly. I think that this isn't maybe one – when you look at some of the other releases coming this week, some of the other books that um, are going to have people like doing exclusives and things like this, this one may get overlooked, but I'm excited. And I think if you enjoy like the Black Lightning television show, this is a definite must for you. So there's the main picks we have for you. We had a couple of new picks, but we didn't give you the Indie Showcase, which we're going to get into right now. This is the Indie Showcase portion of The Last Call presented to you by Black Cape Comics at blackcapecomics.com. You can pre-order all the books we've talked about on here, but like we say, they're big fans of the Indie books, and we have one for the Indie Showcase, and we are going to talk about Something is Killing the Children, number 12. That's right. Now, we talked about Something's Killing the Children number 11 uh, just recently on the Bolo Show. This is a series that is going to continue the heat. Number 12 has all kinds of fire surrounding it with a Peach Momoko incentive. That is something that you are going to want to be on the lookout for, for sure. On top of it, you got the reader buzz. The fact that now uh, this series has increased in readership size, which is not normal. This is Walking Deadish. This is why I've made this comparison before and people have chewed my head off, but it's walking deadish that you were sitting here 11, 12 issues in, and we're starting to increase print runs rather than drop drastically from issue number one. That tells you the hallmark of a truly, truly iconic series. And, you know, Black Cape Comics, they want to be a part of this. And they're so sticking their claim. They absolutely. And, you know, and we've said this for a long time, even before we started working with them, they are some of the best producers of exclusive variants out there. And they think outside the box. Ben and his team at Black Cape Comics, and they did it again. So we saw, we just talked about that Goya dark period, you know, coming out of left field with that high art homage. We're coming with something a little different here with a Something's Killing the Children 12 exclusive from Black Cape Comics. Now we saw what their number 11 variant did, and we're coming back with the exact same artist on 12, except this one is more of a multimedia piece. The original piece was done with real zipper, hand-stitched, buttons, uh, it was done with uh, uh, pencil it, and, and paint, uh, all to create this unique art piece that you will see adorning this cover on this excellent virgin cover, uh, limited and available only at blackcapecomics.com. Yeah, and that's going to go on sale. If you're watching this as it premieres on Friday, it goes on sale tomorrow, Saturday, October 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern as well. But that is the Indie Showcase. We just had one for you this week because the two we talked about last week got pushed to this week. So if you want to see those, make sure you go back and watch last week's last call as well. But again, blackcapecomics.com, you can pre-order a bunch of indie books. They have a bunch of great exclusives. They even have exclusive prints up there for sale. But we also, like we do every time at the end of these videos, probably one of the most important things is those additional printings, right, Jack? That's right, and boy, we got a list for you. Uh, We're going to start off with Image Comics, That Texas Blood. I got to tell you, you guys must be loving this series because they are coming with... It's freaking awesome. They are coming with issues one through four in a second print. So, yeah, everybody's got to be checking it out. Great opportunity going to be to grab that and and read it if you have missed out. TMNT, The Last Ronin. Talk about a book that's on fire. Shortage is reported for next week's allocation. Uh, IDW has already announced... A second printing for that one. Then we're it's just on. the ones that were people didn't get. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, the ones that people didn't get, they'll just color in the IDW logo. Uh, and then we're going with Marvel, and we know how Marvel does. Cable number five, second print. Avengers number thirty six, second print. Captain Marvel twenty two, second print. Miles Morales, Spider Man nineteen, second print. Hellions number five, second print. New Mutants. 13 second print 
Star Wars number seven, second print. Star Wars Darth Vader number six, second print. Strange Academy number one, fifth print. That's one I'd be on the lookout for. Thor number eight, a second print. Venom 27, a fourth print. And coming finally from Scout Comics, We Live number one, coming with a second print. So there it is, guys. There's all those additional printings as well as our picks in the Indie Showcase. Make sure you guys check out Black Cape Comics this Saturday for that Something is Killing the Children and next Wednesday for that Venom number 30 exclusive variant. This is Brian Jack from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.